So my name's John Schneider and I live on this boat. It is a 1981 Newport 28. And I'm teaching myself to sail and that's going really well. I feel like I'm doing very well with that. And um, the plan now is to go live a life of, of adventure. Um, I want to sail to Scotland. That is my ancestral home. When I was a kid growing up, my grandma, her house was filled with Scottish heritage. And my name, actually, my biological name is actually John David Fraser. And my dad died when I was very young and I was adopted by uh, my, my dad. I call him my dad, was Ken Schneider. And my mom had remarried. And, and you know, ever since then, that the Fraser name has been, uh, you know, something of an enigma for me. It's, um, it's a big part of me. It's who I was born as. Uh, my Aunt June used to teach Highland dancing in the basement of Grandma's house. And, and so I've always had this, this deep connection with Scotland and I've always wanted to go back there. So when I bought this sailboat and I was thinking about sailing, you know, one of the things about living on a sailboat and sailing is that, you know, your house can go anywhere in the world. And at first it just seemed sort of fanciful to think that way. It's like, you know, yeah, your house can go anywhere in the world. But then as I started sailing, as I, well, first as I started living on the boat, you know, it was just like, you can't live on a boat, it, except you can, and I am. And then it was like, well, you can't sail anywhere. I mean, except people do, and, and I have. Well, we made it. Be Sauvage held together the longest passage I've ever made with her, and maybe the longest passage she's ever made, period. And so then it occurred to me to just go see the world, man. Like, and, and the first place I thought of was Scotland. Uh, it's a big ask. It's, I think I calculated it out. It's all, it's like 7,000, all of 7,000 nautical miles to get there. Um, of course, depending on which route you take. Um, but yeah, that's the objective now. That's kind of the only thing that's on my mind is getting to Scotland. And then from there, who knows? I anticipate that's going to take, I don't know, like a year, maybe two, because there is no rush. I need to spend time learning how to sail and that's going to take time. Uh, right now it is May, like May 1st, I think today. And so the idea I think is to stick around Canada off the coast of Vancouver Island for this summer, for sure. Um, learning how to sail. There's, you know, all the Channel Islands, the, the waters around here are difficult to sail in. They offer a lot of different conditions. And so the prevailing wisdom is that if you can sail in this area, that you should be able to sail anywhere within reason. And so let's say that takes the whole summer, then the plan after that will be, that it carries me into fall. And then, I don't know, traveling gets more difficult in the fall for sure. And so, I don't know, beyond fall, I'm not really sure. Um, I think the plan would be to stick around Canadian waters or maybe back here at Point Roberts again for the winter, you know, come December, January, February, um, and then in the spring, start heading south again. Make my way down the Pacific coast towards uh, California, um, and uh, and then ultimately Mexico through the Panama Canal into the Bahamas up the eastern seaboard and then from there I'm not really sure there's a few different options that we can take but anyways it's um, it's a journey of epic proportions for me um, but a big part of the journey is just this act of living on a sailboat this alternative lifestyle this this simple lifestyle and I don't know, it's the channel, like maybe the channel morphs into that to some degree of, of uh, you know, inspiring other people. I get a lot of comments and, and, and messages from people like, oh my goodness, I wish I could do that. Um, and you can, it's, uh, 
I mean, it's not easy, but yeah, absolutely you can. If I can do it, anybody can do it. So anyways, that's my rant for today. My happy little rant as I'm sailing. I got both sails up, cruising along. And, and I'm just going to enjoy the rest of the afternoon. And I don't know what's going to happen after that, but it's already fun. So right now you're saying to yourself, hey, wait, I thought John fixed this galley foot pump. And the answer is that uh, I sort of did. I got the kit to rebuild it. So it sat in a box for enough time um, that, I mean, I was careful. I put all the pieces to <laughs> together where they needed to be. But there was one piece that sat outside of the rest of the parts. And I looked at it like a couple weeks later, maybe even a month later. And uh, I was like, what is this piece? <laughs> and uh, I ended up throwing it away. And it was kind of crucial to putting together the pump once I rebuilt it. So anyways, I went to the wreckers there the other day and uh, grabbed this, this one here that you see me working on now. And um, so now I've got a pump and a half or a pump and seven eighths. Um, and uh, I'm just going to throw this old one in or the, the one that I just bought. I'm just going to throw it in and see if it works. If I need to rebuild it, I can because I've still got all the rebuild kit for it. So, so yeah, that's the story behind the water pump. Um, I'm a little embarrassed to say that I did that, but oh well, accidents happen. So yeah, so now I'm going to install this and uh, we'll have water in the sink finally. And no water draining out the uh, bottom of the floor either, or out of the uh, cabinet there. All right, time to just button everything up. And uh, that's one more task complete to make this boat a little more livable. So good. Running water for the first time since I've been on this boat. Now I have to figure out why the drain won't... Uh, won't go. I think I need to get under the boat and clear these through hulls. So that will require a dive. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of with that sink that uh, it won't, it won't drain. It just must be plugged up underneath. So yeah, I'll get to that. Cool. You know, some of the other things that I can talk about on the channel here, I was, it was interesting. I got a call yesterday from uh, a guy that I admire over on threads, um, always has a great take on life and, and is doing some coaching, uh, professional and personal coaching. And so I always like his take on things. And so I comment regularly on his posts and, and then all of a sudden he's, I get a message from him. He's like, Hey, do, are you up for a call? And I was like, sure, man. So we talked for over an hour last night. And, um, what was interesting was he just felt compelled to talk to me and didn't know a whole lot about me. And one of his sort of ambitions was to, well, not one of his, the ambition that he had this sort of vision that that was calling to him was to move to a you know and, and do a homestead and uh so it's so funny you know i said well yeah did you know that i've done that i've done a lot of that and he was like well no what do you mean and i was like well in a past life i was president of slow food edmonton and I've, i i was actually part of the canadian delegation to terra madre in 2012 and so I gave a, a, a speech there. I gave a, a little seminar there on heirloom and ancient varieties of wheat. For those that don't know, my, my past career in, in the last 15 years or so has been an organic grain farmer and flour miller. So I developed a farm business where I grew certified organic uh, heirloom and ancient grains. And then uh, I milled them into flour and we sold that flour direct to consumers. So. Um, but the other things that I've done before I did the flower business, I wanted to work out. I was desperate to find a way to make a farm business work. And nowadays that's tough without millions of dollars worth of equipment and land. 
it, it's really hard, but where there's a will, there's a way. So I figured out a way and that was, but before I figured it out, I had to figure out a bunch of failures. So we did pastured chickens. We did, uh, you know, all sorts of different breeds of uh, beef. And uh, what else do we do? We did uh, pigs, of course, different heirloom varieties of pigs. We did turkeys, we did Christmas trees, we did <laughs> sheep. Um, what else am I missing? I don't know, we did it all. And, you know, I wanted to see what farm activity would be, you know, possible or profitable on a small scale. And of course, the other way to do that is to just capture as many of the profit centers as you can um, yourself as the producer. So, um, so anyways, I did it with the grain farm and with the farming business. I built uh, a straw bale house um, that was so self-sufficient. It only cost us $700 a year in, in heat and hot water. Most of that, though, was in the form of, or most of that heat, I should say, was in the form of me cutting and splitting firewood. We had a little wood stove in the center of the house that kept the whole house warm. And in Alberta, you know, it regularly gets minus 30 in the winter. So, um, so yeah, you know, it, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I thought you'd be interested in that. I, I have a lot of background that maybe a lot of people don't know about. You know, the farming, the, the homesteading, the starting business, entrepreneurship, and different things like that. This is the most challenging thing that I've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> Living on a sailboat, teaching myself how to sail. Um, and then this whole business of being present online. Uh, I don't quite get it yet but i'm getting there i will i'll figure it out um and it's fun trying um so hey one thing you can do to help is don't forget to subscribe and like and you know the best thing of all is share the channel with friends and family that you know might like this sort of content we're going to be talking about learning to sail we're going to be talking about simplifying your life and and downsizing things and and just living free um we're going to talk about sailing adventures and destination travel we're really going to talk a lot about wild food because i want to start fishing and and uh, hunting for food we're going to do a lot of cooking uh dan is going to be on the show and so she is a trained sommelier and, and chef so we're going to eat well and we're going to drink well and all these things to look forward to that are so much fun and i can't wait to share them with you so be sure to tag along also don't forget to check out our patreon channel and now we are uh you can join the youtube community as well that link is just below so all sorts of exclusive content live content there things behind the scenes sort of things little tips and tricks for for a simple living uh, and what we're doing here with the with the channel as far as travel goes and sailing and things like that. Let's try a tack.
Not bad. It, uh, it looks warm here. That's the thing about living here in the Pacific Northwest is that, uh, or on the Pacific Coast, is that, you know, it can look nice and warm. You know, it's there's a gentle breeze, but the ocean is just so cold that uh, the temperature doesn't get very warm. Not yet, at least anyways. It's like probably 10, 12 in that range, something like that. There's a harbor seal up ahead of us. <laughs> They're so cute. Well, that was fun. Today was the sort of the first official day of the sailing season. So May 4th and um, the Point Roberts Yacht Club had their flag raising ceremony. We had a little like reception beforehand. And then we went out and did the sail past, salute the Commodore. So we did a little sailing with the on, on Opus, and and now there's another reception. So just grabbed a, a beer and a soda from the boat, and now I'll walk over to the yacht club, and uh, yeah, do our thing. It was a fun day. There's Lex. Hey, hi, Alexis. Hey, you missed the seal. What are you? I missed the seal. I had a seal beside my boat there the other day. What's really cool is that I've sailed, I don't know, uh, six, seven times on my boat. Um, and I've been on Opus twice now. And so what I've noticed with the way I learn too, is that if I do it once, I'll be clumsy and awkward with it. But then when my mind rests, between sessions, the next time I come back to it, my mind will have figured out the problem or worked through how it feels or whatever. So I noticed today on Opus, I was in the snake pit again, working on, on sheets, for sale sheets and trim. And, and yeah, it, it was easy. It was, it was a lot of fun, had some really good tacks. So the next time I go out, racing I have a lot more confidence in my ability to do things better proper so yeah it's fun just getting better every time it's so much fun so there's a couple different ways that I can play with the sail shape um, I can move the traveler which is this thing back and forth which changes the angle of the sail and then I can also let go of the downhaul and and that will allow the sail to fall out a little further. So we're trying to get those telltale tapes to flutter um, on both sides there. And on this bottom part of the sail, I'm not doing a great job. So I'll have to figure that one out. Just trying to think through the, the problem. Maybe it isn't a problem. Three of the telltales are going really good. It's just that bottom one. 